Hi all, welcome to another amazing inner chest nutshell game. The game today is Michele against Lionel uh, Kizetsky, Kizetsky, who's very well known actually to be on the wrong side of the immortal chess game. Let me read you a bio from chessgames.com. So, Lionel Adalbert Bagration Felix Kizetsky Kierzeks, born 1806, died 1853, 47 years old. Uh, he was of mixed Polish and German descent in what is now Tartu, a teacher of mathematics. He became increasingly absorbed in chess and in 1839 went to France to meet uh, Le Bourdonnais. Whilst there, he took up residence at the Cafe de la Régence, giving lessons or playing games for a fee of five francs per hour. He defeated Horowitz, plus seven, drawn one, minus four, in a match in London, 1846. However, he is best remembered for his loss in the immortal chess game against Adolf Anderson at the London 1851 tournament, and also a line in the King's Gamut accepted. Uh, I'll just show you that line. Uh, so it goes like this with g5 h4 g4 95 okay so um that's a bit similar to, it's similar start to this game actually let's have a look now so this game played in 1845 Michelet against Lionel Kiesatsky e4 e5 we have a king's gambit it's taken knight f3 g5 now white didn't play h4 for the line I just mentioned. White played bishop c4. We have g4. Michelet played knight e5. So not minding it seems queen h4. So white has forfeited potentially castling rights if he moves his king, but he does actually move his king. Uh, take uh, playing g3 doesn't look particularly appetizing. So king f1, we have f3, d4, knight f6, knight c3, protecting the pawn, bishop g7, g3, this encourages queen h3 check, king f2, d6, now knight takes f7, rook f8, hitting the knight, the knight comes to attack the queen, Queen plays check, and here Black actually has a very good potential pin, which he tries to make use of here immediately with Bishop H6. Um, but stronger is Knight C6 with the idea of Bishop H6. This this is uh, actually it's it's much stronger uh, because if the King tries to play away from that diagonal then there's knight b4 check and on c2 this is actually a really difficult position if knight c6 is played here uh, if a3 just just to show a3 there might be knight takes d4 and things are getting nasty pretty nasty indeed uh, for example queen takes queen takes h1 if king takes that looks scary check and if here, knight d5 check, and <laughs> it, it's it's terrible for white this position. Yeah, so black did seem to have a great opportunity here. It's it's the king's game. It's not the soundest of openings anyway, uh, basically. But black played bishop h6 immediately, giving white a bit of a reprieve here in king d3 unpinning, and after knight c6. White has time now to play a3. Now with the bishop on this h6 square, there's no major tactic of knight takes d4 like earlier. Black plays bishop takes g5, and now knight takes e4. Very very aggressive stuff. Uh, is it sound here? Maybe better was actually just knight a5 in this position. Uh, for example, bishop dropping back b6 with the idea of bishop a6 and it's slightly better for black technically white can parry that diagonal and it's slightly better 
for black. But this is this is going a bit crazy. Knight takes e4. We have queen e1. It might be possible simply just to take on e4. So we have queen e1, possibly a bit controversial there. Because uh, on knight takes e4, it looks really dangerous. But uh, if we look at this position, there's king c3. King is safe enough on c3, it seems. And after rook e1, white's getting a big advantage actually. d4 is held up, the bishop's pinned on d5. There's bishop d5. This is a nasty pin. So, yeah, it seems as though this is a little bit on the unsound side. But, um, we have white played queen e1, Mitchell a played queen e1, bishop f5, knight takes, but now f2, and it looks really quite dangerous again, hitting the queen, that horrible pin knight, queen e3 trying to hold on to the knight, king d7, so if black's able to bypass castling queenside just to activate the rook, for example, to e8, to hit e4, white tries to parry pressure with bishop d5 we have rook a e8 building up the pressure on e4 rook a f1 black's fine here and should play perhaps bishop g6 but black now played the more forcing bishop takes e4 check after bishop takes e4 black had a very cunning looking idea here. Although uh, black's queen is attacked, there is a pin here, and in fact, black plays what seems to be a completely crushing move. Rook f3, creating a pin here as well as here. So a cross pin has been created with rook f3. Very difficult looking position, right? If bishop takes its check, that's the point, it's check, and then black has. Uh, the chance to take on f3. So what can white do here? White to play. What would you play here with white if I give you five seconds starting from now? Okay, black may not have seen this, calculated this properly. <laughs> Kizatsky wasn't the most fortunate player it seems. <laughs> Queen takes f3 was played. Pretty forcing move. And now, guess what? Bishop f5 check. Look at those bishops. They actually force black to give up the rook in this position. Rook, the rook has to be interposed. It's a very unfortunate position. And you'll note the Queen's escape square has also been taken out. So the bishop's not only combining to win a rook here, but the queen's also in prison now. And it's she's in her, her own prison. And white casually just wins the rook with d5. Knight e5 check. And we have the king marching up the board with king e4, leaving the queen in prison. h5. d takes e6 check. This pawn is pretty dangerous. The king has to stay around here, because otherwise e7, you know, if king c6, e7 looks very, very strong. And what's the queen doing? Yeah, there's no, st no stopping this pawn. So the king has to stay around. We have bishop f6, just a very calm move, keeping the queen in prison, bishop f6. That's black's best, one of black's best pieces at the moment, the knight. h4, trying to get the queen desperately out of prison. White takes off, Black's best piece, though, after d takes, the queen's frantically trying to get out of prison here. Uh, white has to be careful not to let the queen out. All play, I believe, g4. Let's have a look. If g4, mm, queen is given h3, but it's still, <laughs> it's it's still not not great prospects for the queen there. Uh, anyway, but white actually just ignored that h4 pawn and played king takes e5. And now after h takes g, guess what? White plays, which is enough to convince black to resign here. If I give you five seconds, white play in this position. Uh, 
at move 31 king f6 so the game ended here because if g takes simply bishop g6 is enough to win because this pawn is lethal now if black doesn't give up the queen then we have e7 check and mating yeah <laughs> or this way is not much better it's it's uh it's winning for white fundamentally it's well there's a rook here as well to come so yeah <laughs> Bishop uh, g6 is, is going to be enough, or even rook d1 is also, uh, it's all winning for white, but bishop g6 is, is easy because of e7. So, yeah, after king f6, black resigned. Unfortunately for Kazietsky, I mean, he is down in chess history for his immortal game loss. He's a great loser, one of the greatest losers on chess, uh, you know, for the most dramatic games. And this is one of his more dramatic lesser known uh losses so with the queen being entombed in, during the game uh okay hope you enjoyed that one comments questions likes appreciated thanks very much